gun purchases are impulsive. Um, about 66% of purchases happen when consumers see gum, whether that's in store, whether that's online. That's the vice president of Global Gum and Mints in Mars's snacking division. And yeah, a pack of chewing gum isn't some kind of big ticket long-term purchase that requires a down payment or a mortgage. It's the stuff you grab at the grocery checkout when you realize you've had one too many free cheese samples. But here's the thing. There may be a rise in demand for chewing gum by, say, your girlfriend, but across the board, gum sales have been left stuck under a desk for quite some time. The Associated Press says that according to one market research firm, last year's worldwide gum sales were 10% below its 2018 figures. And according to a different market research firm, the number of gum packages sold here in the former colonies dropped by nearly one-third in 2020. Maybe those double mint twins used to be triplets. We've seen sales of gum decline since the beginning of the pandemic. She's with a market research company called Mint tell, which kind of sounds like a brand of gum. And she highlights that as consumers have become more health conscious, some of the ingredients of gum may be leading chewers across the globe to spit the stuff out for good. We've seen over the course of the last five years or so, consumers being more concerned about how much sugar is in their diet. And also, it feels like they're almost as concerned about artificial or high-intensity sweeteners. You might recall that earlier this year, the long-enduring Fruit Stripe Gum, the 50-something-year-old brand, not the flavor, which disappeared faster than a TikTok trend, was discontinued due to consumer preferences and purchasing patterns. Okay, so if people aren't into chewing gum these days, what's to stave off poor Bazooka Joe and the gang from receiving an untimely execution in their next comic strip? There's a rise in uh, consumers chewing gum for well-being reasons. That's right. According to our Mars snacking executive here, there's something of a realignment going on in the world of gum marketing. Rather than being an occasional breath freshener and a great, great way to spend a quarter at the mall, the people at Mars Wrigley want to position gum as an instant stress reliever, which they say is simply giving the people what they want. The data tells us that 85% of consumers are looking for ways to relieve uh, their stress. I went into my bookmarks to bring up Orbit Gum's website, which asked for my birthday for some reason and this stuff is being positioned on its page as some sort of confidence booster. Gum isn't going to fix problems. Gum isn't going to give you a significant vitamin boost or, you know, that sort of thing. But the action of chewing gum is a stress reliever. The flavors can be mood lifters. Now, this isn't the first time that chewing gum has been heralded as some sort of a health remedy as opposed to a minty mouth toy. The good people at the American Dental Association highlight that the act of chewing gum increases salivary flow and stimulation of oral taste receptors and say that chewing sugar-free gum when mixed with daily brushing can contribute to reducing caries risk. Dental caries meaning cavities and tooth decay for those who might not know and had to Google that to figure it out. And about a hundred years ago, fine brands like Beeman's original Pepsin chewing gum promoted that its scientific formula could be used to treat insomnia caused by indigestion or dyspepsia. And in another ad, they claimed that chewing their gum to aid digestion would allow your laugh to spread sunshine and gain friends. Why is that guy so popular? He's chewing Beeman's gum. But when it comes to wellness, the Mars Wrigley Confectionery isn't just trying to take the stress out of your mouth. Another new brand, Respawn, by five is targeted towards gamers and contains green tea and B vitamins to help players maintain focus. Or, at least as the name suggests, helps pass the time while waiting to respawn after being killed by a teen in Helldivers. We constantly look out for what is that the consumers are looking for, um, and then um, we bring that to um, our lab and get our scientists to work on it. While our stretchy, sticky lab technicians here are hard at work making new variations of this stuff. This is gum base. These are going to be um, gum pellets that get coated and actually get put into bottles. That's not to say that health alone is setting up the big chew for a comeback. For one thing, our market researcher here notes that there are some generational differences when it comes to chewing gum. Younger consumers are the ones most likely to chew gum. Older consumers, the least likely to chew gum. For those younger consumers, they're looking for fun and flavor and adventure and cool packaging and all of that. Older consumers looking for health benefits. Other brands like Simply told the AP that the gum bubble hasn't necessarily popped. It's just that the industry needs more innovation and gum needs to be more compelling. Are you compelled?